quickly, the two real unique uh, things about Alaska that I've experienced are road trips. The traveling system, we had three uh, tournaments in rural locations where we had to take planes to fly. So which means for fundraising, you never real, really know what your travel cost is going to be until the end of the season. So you really need to surpass that need base um, for just one season and prepare for other years and to exceed the cost of each season. So to get a better idea of certain areas of Alaska, there were four coaches who um, got back to me on time and were able to conduct phone-based interviews to give them questions about uh, just what issues they're currently facing, uh, the fundraising issue, as I talked about with the traveling costs of Alaska, and then how reclassification was able to, uh, how, how it impacted uh, their school, and then possible solutions they have for any of these um, issues. We were able to develop more of a discussion-based type interview, uh, make it semi-formal, so then that way uh, they were able to take whatever was really the main issue for them and get the ball rolling. So uh, we're going to spotlight a couple of my interviews. The first one was Coach V. Kleitch. She, is, uh, she coaches in a Russian village school and has been there for uh, 12 years, coaching both basketball and volleyball. Uh, for her, the economical, uh, with, the dis with the cost of transportation going up, the district funding isn't matching and they are a public school. So uh, for the district had, in 2001 she said, uh, told them that 15 passenger vans were no longer safe if they were traveling outside of 100 miles from their home base. So they, were, they had to book uh, a bus driver and a bus for all of their road trips. And the funding didn't match that, these costs because they were, she said, about double of what a 15 passenger van would be. Um, and then also for her cultural, uh, for the cultural issue she faces, they have a 75% Russian old believer enrollment. And what this means is they have certain holy days that are different than the district schedule and the national holidays that they have to take off, which makes scheduling a real uh, conflict for them. And then also, uh, post is a six-week fast that they have to do twice a year um, as part of the Russian old believer faith. And this means that they are, in those six weeks, are unable to eat any animal products. And as an athlete exerting that amount of effort um, and energy, not getting those nu nutrients she saw wasn't really being uh, supplemented in their modified diets during this fast. And then for her, reclassification, what it uh, meant was that it was a longer state tournament because she is in the 1A, the smaller classification. So it was now, instead of a three-day 18 tournament, it was a five-day five, five day with four games and you have one-day break, um, and it's a 16-team tournament. So this year, it was scheduled opposite spring break due to scheduling conflicts over at the Sullivan and with the Aces. Um, so then the students missed additional school, whereas normally the three-day tournament would have been during uh, the natural break from school and they wouldn't have missed any classes and no, uh, you know, no threat to get behind on school. Uh, because this is um, a high level of tournament with the state, um, for the state tournament ending up the year, the students were less focused on being able catching up with their studies and really putting their attention into uh, their athletics, which she saw as an issue as well. The next interview I want to cover is uh, Coach Reed Cornstead. He has 15 years coaching experience in the state of Alaska. Uh, during the course of his interview, he spotlighted that ASTA really needs to standardize officiating. Uh, and this doesn't, he wasn't talking about the quality because he knew there are good lessons to be learned and poor and good officiating. But uh, region by region, the education opportunities and the pay scale uh, differ. Whereas a, as an official in the Kenai Peninsula School District would be making more money than say in the Southeast uh, School District. So uh, for us, it needs to step in and really make it a guideline of what the regions need to be paying. And so the refs can expect this when they travel to other areas to uh, officiate games. And this includes in the state tournament. Um, he cited that currently the KPBSD, which is Canada Peninsula School District, um, they pay more than ASA does for the state tournament. And so this, the higher quality of officials aren't willing to give up their time, take time off of work to come in and do these tournaments because it isn't matching uh, the effort that they put in all year. Also, um, he was, 
he said half uh, half of his time is spent on fundraising and the other half is coaching and it, it's it's a year-long thing the seasonal costs are increasing with inflation and rising fuel costs um, and again going back to the Clutch's interview uh, the district isn't matching that funding in those public schools and then also coaching stipend while he stressed that's not why he coaches because it is for the kids but there has only been one increase in 14 years in the Kenai Peninsula School District uh, for the end of the year stipend for coaches had a direct quote from him about reclassification, um, and he said, our classification benefit the most as the schools now in 3A were targeted with the change in enrollment numbers. The state is too diverse for a solution to satisfy everyone. And I thought that was a poignant statement to include because um, what he was talking about, how they benefited the most, was the uh, lower competitive teams in the 4A and higher in the 2A were able to meld into that 3A conference, which is who was really protesting to ASA that there needed to be a change. Um, and being a member of the upper division, he didn't have the experience of the lower classifications. And I think that's why he said it's too diverse for a solution to satisfy everyone, because with rural schools having enrollment of 10 kids or less, but still being able to play a team on the road system of 60 kids, because that would be still in the same 1A classification, uh, the, there's too large of a competitive gap for the most part. And also really, they, while they had the intent of helping out schools, it really benefited the few and not for the greater good of many. So findings of these interviews, uh, the two main issues that everybody harped on was of course the lack of district funding and how the burden of running a school-based uh, sports season, it, the burden is now all on the players and the parents to go out there and do the extra work to raise this money. Um, and as the costs increase, so does that burden. And then also the officials. Uh, at the state tournament, it's not standardized to where the three and four A, the two larger classifications, they get three officials at the state tournament, but ASA only schedules two for the lower classifications. And while it's true there are less, uh, less kids in these classifications, the games are still the same. It's, it's still, everything else is standardized and um, all the coaches feel, feel like also needs to step in and change that immediately. Um, also about reclassification, for my interviews, it was actually contrary to what I had anticipated coming into the survey, or this uh, interview process, it was where the impact was minimalized. And it was mainly because all of the schools who shifted down or up followed along with their conferences. Now, I know just from firsthand experience that there are schools out there who had to change um, conferences and completely change their uh, traveling schedule, but uh, those interviews were not able to take place as they had not gotten back to me. Um, so the other changes uh, that they, the coaches uh, offer are to change the structure of state tournaments. The uh, small schools don't bring in nearly as many fans, and uh, the, the lower classification coaches think it would benefit uh, the players and the fans to bring it into one of the larger high schools around here because the seating at the Sullivan is too vast and the experience just isn't the same as they have gone through this entire season. Um, so to help the, the athletes experience the same thing and you know minimize impact of going to the state tournament, uh, moving it to the high schools may cause a better game atmosphere. And then also the cost of officials uh, is still on the, on the individual schools to pay for these officials. So whether or not uh, is it the district or the state the coaches feel like some alleviation of costs uh, needs to happen from outside funding. 